18. The Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community Presents The Mini Biography of Mike Pence Born 1959 Former U.S. Congressman and Gov of Indiana, Mike Pence was chosen Vice President of the United States with President Donald Trump in 2016. Who is Mike Pence? U.S. Vice President Mike Pence was a conservative radio and television talk show host in the 1990s. After losing two bids for a U.S. congressional seat, he successfully ran for Congress in 2000, rising to the effective position of Republican Conference Chairman, before being chosen Governor of Indiana in 2012. Named Donald Trump's running mate in July 2016, Pence ended up being Vice President of the United States when Trump won the presidential race on November 8, 2016, though their administration ended four years later on with a loss to the Joe Biden-Kamala Harris ticket. Eerie Life, Family, and Education Michael Richard Pence was born upon June 7, 1959, in Columbus, Indiana. Among six kids of Nancy and Edward Pence, a U.S. Army veteran who ran a series of filling station, Pence was politically influenced by the Irish Catholic leanings of his household. He grew up admiring previous President John F. Kennedy and offered for the Bartholomew County Democratic Party as a student at Columbus North High School. While church had actually played an essential role in Pence's early domesticity, he ended up being more deeply religious as a trainee at Hanover College. In addition, although he elected Jimmy Carter in 1980, he became motivated by Ronald Reagan and the Republican Party. After finishing with a BA in history in 1981, he transferred to Indianapolis in 1983 to participate in the Indiana University McKinney School of Law, making his JD in 1986. While church had played a crucial role in Pence's early domesticity, he became more deeply spiritual as a student at Hanover College, where he ended up being a born-again evangelical Catholic. Marriage and Children Pence has been married to partner Karen since 1985. A former grade school instructor, Karen has also been included with youth-related not-for-profit companies. The couple has three adult children, Michael, Charlotte, and Audrey. Early professional career. Pence entered into personal practice following his graduation and tried his hand at politics by ending up being a precinct committee man for the Marion County Republican Party. Seeking to make a bigger splash, he ran for Congress in 1988 and 1990, losing both times to Democrat Phil Sharp. Nevertheless, Pence found out a valuable lesson in defeat. Revolted by his own line of attack ads, he penned an essay in 1991 entitled Confessions of a Negative Campaigner, and swore to preach a favorable message after that. On the other hand, his public profile continued to grow. Pence functioned as president of the Indiana Policy Review Foundation from 1991 through 1993, before making the leap to radio talk show punditry with The Mike Pence Show. Referring to himself as Rush Limbaugh on DCAF, Pence was unapologetic in his assistance of a conservative program, however was commended for his level-headed way and desire to listen to opposing views. His radio show was syndicated in 1994, and he branched off to TV as a morning program host the list below year, before ending both programs in 1999, U.S. Congressman. Pence revived his political career by running for Congress once again in 2000, this time winning a seat. Explaining himself as a Christian, a conservative and a Republican, in that order, he quickly demonstrated that he wasn't afraid to buck celebration lines. He opposed President George W. Bush's No Child Left Behind policy in 2001, along with a Medicare prescription drug growth the following year. While his positions rankled celebration senior citizens, they boosted his credibility as a male of strong convictions, and he easily won re-election five times. Climbing the ranks of Republican management, Pence was named head of the Republican Study Committee in 2005. He was unsuccessful in his quote to become minority leader in 2006, losing to Ohio's John Boehner, but two years later he was unanimously chosen to the effective position of Republican Conference Chairman. A strong financial conservative, Pence insisted on cuts to the federal spending plan before supporting funding for Hurricane Katrina relief efforts in 2005, and was amongst the leading opponents of the federal bailout in 2008. He also drew attention for his social views, notably supporting a strategy to close down the government over a fight to defund Planned Parenthood in 2011. Indiana Governor In 2011, Pence announced his objective to run for governor of Indiana the following year. Regardless of strong name recognition and a platform focused on tax cuts and job development, he ended up being embroiled in a heated race with Democrat John Gregg, eventually pulling out a close win with simply under 50% of the vote. After he became governor, Pence had his congressional documents, which are housed at Indiana University in Bloomington sealed. According to the donor arrangement, the public is prohibited from seeing his documents from the 12 years he served in Congress until either December 5, 2022, or the death of the donor, 
whichever is later. In 2013, Pence sealed the offer on a $1.1 billion give back, the largest tax cut in state history. He likewise signed into law the state's first pre-K funding program and guided funds toward infrastructure enhancements. By 2016, Indiana was delighting in a $2 billion budget plan surplus and a pristine AAA credit rating, though critics explained that the state's earnings were listed below national average. Pence discovered himself in the national spotlight and on shaky ground after signing the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in March 2015. Planning to protect entrepreneur who didn't wish to participate in same-sex weddings, Pence rather encountered resistance from moderate members of his party and corporations that threatened to pull out of the state, and he was required to change the cost to provide exemptions for LGBTQ neighborhoods. Similarly, he came under fire in the spring of 2016 for signing a bill to prohibit abortions when the fetus has a disability. Donald Trump's running mate Quickly after revealing his objective to run for a second term as governor, Pence went back to the nationwide spotlight when he emerged as the vice-governmental prospect for likely 2016 Republican candidate Donald Trump. Although Pence had opposed some of Trump's views, he was believed to be a great running mate for the New York company magnate due to his ties to congressional leaders and strong assistance amongst conservatives. Pence had originally backed Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz throughout the primaries. On July 15, 2016, Trump officially revealed that Pence was his option for vice-governmental nominee by means of Twitter. At an interview a day later, Trump called Pence a male of honor, character and sincerity. If you look at one of the big factors that I chose Mike and, among the reasons is party unity, I have to be truthful, Trump stated. So many individuals have stated, party unity. Since I'm an outsider. I don't want to be an outsider. On July 20, 2016, Pence accepted his party's vice-governmental nomination at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Ohio. He followed Cruz, who was booed off the face for a speech in which he decreased to endorse Trump. In his acceptance speech, Pence stayed made up and spoke of his running mate Trump, you understand, he's a guy known for a larger personality, a vibrant design and great deals of charisma. Therefore, I think he was just looking for some balance on the ticket. Donald Trump gets it. He's the real post. He's a doer in a video game usually reserved for talkers, the vice-governmental nominee continued. And when Donald Trump does his talking, he does not tiptoe around the thousand new rules of political correctness. He's his own man, clearly American. Where else would an independent spirit like his discover a following than in the land of the free and the home of the brave? Historic Presidential Election On November 8, 2016, Pence was chosen Vice President of the United States when Donald Trump won the presidential race, beating Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton. The sensational Trump-Pence victory was considered a definite rejection of facility politics by blue-collar and working-class Americans. In the early hours of the morning after the race had been called in Trump's favor, Pence spoke at the project's success celebration at the Hilton Hotel in New York City. This is a historical night. This is a historic time, Pence stated to the crowd of fans. The American individuals have spoken and the American individuals have actually elected their brand new champ. On November 11, Trump named Pence to be the head of his shift group, changing New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Pence's office likewise stated he would continue to serve as Indiana Gov till his term ended on January 9, 2017. Back in his home state, Pence found himself in a legal fight to attempt to hide the contents of an email sent to him by a political ally. The email was gotten in touch with Pence's decision to have Indiana sign up with other states and suing to block President Barack Obama's executive actions on immigration. Bill Groth, a Democratic attorney, looked for to have the contents of an accessory to the email made public in an appeal of an earlier court choice, in which the Indiana Supreme Court ruled that it was not for the court to choose whether to launch the emails. Pence's defense group countered that the contents of the email were protected from being launched under the state's Access to Public Records Act. U.S. Vice President On January 20, 2017, Pence was sworn in on the actions in front of the U.S. Capitol by Supreme Court Justice of the United States Clarence Thomas. Pence took the oath of office before Donald J. Trump was sworn in as the 45th President of the United States. A week after the inauguration, the Vice President spoke at the March for Life anti-abortion rally in Washington, D.C. Be guaranteed, we will not burn out, Pence told activists before the march. We will not rest till we bring back a culture of life for ourselves and our posterity. Vice President Pence likewise highlighted the Trump administration's support of the motion. This administration will deal with Congress to end taxpayer funding of abortion and abortion suppliers, he said. And we will commit those resources to healthcare services for females across America. 
In the very first weeks of the Trump administration, Pence protected the controversial rollout of President Trump's executive order to prohibit immigrants from the primarily Muslim nations of Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia and Yemen for a minimum of 90 days, temporarily suspend the entry of refugees for 120 days and bar Syrian refugees forever. In an interview on Fox News Sunday, the vice president stated, we are going to win the arguments due to the fact that we're going to take the steps required to secure the country, which the president of the United States has the authority to do. President Trump likewise put Pence in charge of a commission to examine supposed citizen fraud in the presidential election. The president, who won the Electoral College, however lost the popular vote by almost 3 million to Clinton, declared that 3 to 5 million people had illegally enacted the election. Bipartisan politicians consisting of Paul Ryan refuted the claim, I've seen no proof to that result, Ryan told reporters. I've made that very, extremely clear. At the very center of our democracy is the stability of the vote the one person, one vote concept, Penn said in an interview with Fox News. And it'll be my honor to lead that commission on behalf of the president and to look into that and give the American individuals the realities. The vice president also played an essential function in the verification of Betsy DeVos, President Trump's nominee for education secretary. Amidst demonstrations from Democratic critics and teachers unions that DeVos, a billionaire charter school advocate without any public school experience, was unqualified for the position, the Senate deadlocked in a 50 to 50 tie. Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska joined their Democratic co-workers in voting versus DeVos. On February 7, 2017, Vice President Pence cast the historic tie-breaking vote to validate her, the first time a vice president has actually been contacted to break a tie in a cabinet election. Michael Flynn controversy. A week later on, it was revealed that another Trump appointee, National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, had actually deceived Vice President Pence about his conversations with Sergei Kislyak, the Russian ambassador to the United States, prior to the inauguration. According to the Washington Post, Flynn independently talked about U.S. sanctions versus Russia with that country's ambassador to the United States during the month before President Trump took workplace, contrary to public assertions by Trump authorities. Vice President Pence had actually appeared on CBS News Face the Nation stating that Flynn had told him that he and Kislyak did not go over anything involving the United States' decision to expel diplomats or enforce censure versus Russia. Flynn resigned on February 13, 2017, after less than one month on the task, and in his letter of resignation he composed, Unfortunately, due to the fact that of the fast lane of events, I accidentally informed the Vice President-elect and others with insufficient info regarding my telephone call with the Russian ambassador. I have regard said sorry to the President and the Vice President, and they have actually accepted my apology. Weeks later, reports circulated that Pence's individual site had actually been hacked, due to the bizarre content being featured. It turned out that viewers were puzzled by a parody site attributed to the VP, created by Funny or Die. Branching out Unlike President Trump, Pence was said to have cultivated strong relationships with the men who preceded him in the executive branch. In November 2017, a new story revealed that Pence spoke with Obama's VP, Joe Biden, at least when each month, and also consulted with Bush's previous second-in-command, Dick Cheney. Their discussions were stated to include the exchange of ideas and advice, with the previous VPs passing on valuable lessons found out throughout their administrations. In late December, Pence made an unannounced trip to Afghanistan to demonstrate American dedication to stability in the region, more than 16 years after war broke out. We've been on a long road together. But President Trump made it clear previously this year that we are with you, Pence informed Afghan authorities, adding, we are here to see this through. In January 2018, weeks after President Trump raised an outcry by revealing his recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital, Pence checked out the area. Much of his journey concentrated on dealing with U.S. partners to counter terrorism and helping Christian minorities in the Middle East, though he likewise tried to smooth over things with Arab leaders. That element didn't exercise too, as Pence and King Abdullah II of Jordan publicly accepted disagree over the decision to recognize Jerusalem, while Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas refused to even meet the American vice president. Weeks later on, Pence became a main figure in the politics surrounding the Winter Olympics, held in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Initially, his choice as head of the U.S. delegation was criticized by freely gay guys as figure skater Adam Rippon, who mentioned Pence's alleged displeasure towards the LGBTQ community. Ripon also supposedly turned down Pence's overtures to satisfy, though the VP's workplace denied having extended an invitation. In February, before the start of the Games, Pence delivered a difficult message to North Korea with the statement that more sanctions were forthcoming. Towards completion of the Games, 
The Washington Post reported that Pence had prepared to privately meet with a top-level delegation of North Korean leaders, before they cancelled at the last minute. The tried meeting contrasted with the administration's public stance that there would be no discussion up until North Korea initially accepted abandon its nuclear program. Returning stateside, the vice president produced more debate with his remarks at a luncheon hosted by the anti-abortion company Susan B. Anthony List and Life Institute in late February. I feel in one's bones in my heart of hearts that this will be the generation that brings back life in America, he said, adding, if everybody do all we can, we can once again, in our time, restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law. Space Force In August 2018, Pence talked at the Pentagon in which he described the administration's strategies to create a sixth branch of the U.S. military, the Space Force. Stating, we must have American dominance in area, and so we will. He kept in mind that President Trump would request $8 billion over the next five years to support military operations because ARENA, while such military growth would require congressional approval, the Department of Defense attempted to kickstart the process by determining several actions to take in the meantime, consisting of establishing civilian oversight for the Space Force and creating the United States Space Command. Critics countered by calling it unnecessary, costly and most likely to cause administrative issues. The following year, Pence was dragged into your House impeachment questions of President Trump after the Washington Post reported that the vice president was involved in efforts to push Ukraine into examining 2020 presidential prospect Joe Biden. Around that time, Pence and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveled to Ankara, Turkey, where they effectively brokered a plan with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to allow the safe passage of Kurdish forces from a location in northeastern Syria under fire from a Turkish military operation. Coronavirus Response on February 26, 2020, President Trump announced that Vice President Pence would lead the administration's action to the coronavirus, which originated in China and was spreading out around the world. Citing his experience with the emergence of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome MERS, as Indiana governor, Pence stressed the value of collaborations between state and city governments and health authorities when reacting to transmittable illness, and stated he would determine the best choices for action to see to the security and well-being and health of the American individuals. While his frequently arranged press rundowns were soon controlled by the existence of Trump, Pence focused on delivering determined variations of the president's changing pronouncements, collaborating efforts with govs and addressing matters of supply lacks. On Monday, March 9, he announced that testing capabilities had increased to the point where 5 million tests would be distributed by the end of the week. With the administration seeking to discover methods to resume companies and schools by April, the vice president raised eyebrows by checking out the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota without a face mask late in the month, stating he wished to have the ability to look employees in the eye and thank them without being obstructed. On October 2, 2020, President Trump revealed that he and spouse Melania had both checked positive for COVID-19. Pence and other half Karen were also tested, but their results came back negative. 2020 Vice Presidential Debate At the vice governmental dispute on October 7, 2020, Pence dealt with difficult questioning from mediator Susan Page and attacks from challenger Kamala Harris over the White House's response to the coronavirus pandemic that had currently eliminated more than 210,000 Americans. The vice president defended the administration's efforts, pointing to Trump's early decision to suspend travel from China, and promised that a vaccine would be ready in record time. He also argued that the Trump White House was much better equipped to support Americans in the House and abroad, over the environmental policies proposed by the Biden-Harris team, stating they will derail the economy. 2020 Election Defeat Although Pence expressed self-confidence in a re-election triumph, the days-long effort to count the ballots brought increasingly grim news for the incumbents, until Biden was declared as the president-elect on November 7, 2020. While Trump raved versus the unlawful voting and launched a flurry of lawsuits to challenge the results, Pence provided a more grounded viewpoint of the procedures, prompting fans to stay vigilant as the lawsuits played out. 